Firstly, let me thank you for inviting me to speak at this event today. And I'm just sorry I cannot be there to join you in person. The promise to leave no one behind really sets the global goals apart from their predecessors. We have seen so much change in the world over the last 30 years, but we know that many people have been excluded. They have not seen the benefits. They are girls and women. They are lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender. They are older women, older people and young people. And as you all know, they are people with disabilities too. For a woman with a disability, we see double the discrimination. For her, the dimensions of gender and disability mean the likelihood of being excluded and being subject to violence is multiplied. If we are going to be successful at leaving no one behind, we need to think more about these multiple dimensions that limit a person's potential and develop policies and programmes to reach them across their whole life cycle. I'm personally very proud of the work we have achieved at DFID on disability inclusion. I joined our Secretary of State to launch our revised disability framework in December. This framework raises our ambition even further. We have maintained our commitment to become an authority on disability data. Monitoring progress as we implement the global goals will be critical if understanding if people with disabilities are benefiting from global development or continue to be left behind. We are asking all our partners to disaggregate their programme data by disability status using the Washington Group short set of questions where they can. We'll also strengthen our work on inclusive economic growth, jobs and livelihoods for people with disabilities. But we have said that we will look more closely at increasing our work on mental health and intellectual and psychosocial disabilities, stigma and discrimination. Making progress in tackling these areas is central to success on this agenda. It's going to be hugely challenging and we know that progress is going to take time, but we cannot and will not shy away from the challenge. But let me be clear, we are at the very start of our journey. There is so much more that we need to do to fulfil our collective promise to leave no one behind. And success will be absolutely reliant on partnerships and international cooperation. And that is why I was delighted to launch with the Disability International Disability Alliance a new Global Disability Action Group in December. We need to keep learning together about how we best include people with disabilities in our work. And frankly, need, we need more donors and organisations working on the issue. It has been such an underinvested, underserved area for so many years that it is now time to redress that balance. And as our framework says, we cannot do everything immediately, but we can all do more. And the reality is that more, the more we can work together, the more we can achieve together.